RJ, what's going on, buddy? I just let RJ out for a little bit of walk around time, you know, and sometimes it's good for him to have a little bit of freedom. What are you doing, buddy? Come on, bud. Come on, stay, 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 stay. Come on, bud. Come on. Oh. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Oh. He's so heavy now. He's just really become a big animal. Oh. Come on, baby. Up you go. Up you go. Up you go. Oh. Okay. Woo! Tell you what. I'm gonna put him back in his pond so I can get to work down here. Cause uh, you're in my way, my man. I tell you what, I love this alligator so much. You're so good, boy. Come on, baby. Let's go. Back in your pond, baby boy. Oh, up you go. Woo! Tell you what, pet alligator is awesome, but he is definitely getting big. And what I mean about getting back to work is actually this. Woo! This beautiful girl here, of course, my GHI Mojave that has a clutch of eggs right now. I've been waiting for this girl. I am super pumped and she was bred to a super cool male. And that male is this banana GHI. Now the GHI Mojave is actually an allelic animal, meaning that everything in the clutch is either gonna be GHI or Mojave. Meaning that if it's GHI, there will actually be a super GHI banana. And if it's Mojave, it will be a Mojave GHI potentially banana. So I can get all kinds of combinations in here. The ones I really want is the banana super GHI and the banana GHI Mojave. Mama looks like she's pretty upset. Let's go ahead and get those eggs. But first, we have to set up an egg box. Come on, Mama. Oh, what a beautiful snake right there. And she actually has one little kind of... Whoa! She show piece. That was a close one. She's got one little boob egg out over here. I'm going to do this. She is a feisty little mama. It's okay, girl. You did really good. This is the very first time she's ever laid eggs. So a first time female, and I absolutely love her to death. Oh my God, she is so beautiful. And she did really well. Mama, you did such a good job. I'm gonna try to just get this, just gonna get these eggs out right here, slowly and carefully. Put them over into here. We'll probably have to separate that one egg right there, but wow, what a great clutch. She's not a very big girl here. And look at how absolutely gorgeous she is. We'll, of course, clean this box up. We'll get her all cleaned up and ready to go get her back onto food and get her conditioned up. In the meantime, we've got two, four, six, seven beautiful eggs. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> doggy. Welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is amazing. So someone actually sent us an Argentine black and white tegu that's a little bit smaller, obviously, and has some time. It's a a little bit feisty right now, I'm not gonna lie, but it starts to calm down the more you handle it for sure. First getting it out can be a little bit of a chore, but of course Taz was amazing, and we got him when he was about a year old. This is probably only about six months old, and again, Taz was a blue tegu. This is actually a black and white tegu, so we're hoping that this one will chill out a bunch, and I actually wanna probably get a red tegu as well, so I think getting a couple tegus would be great, not only for the Reptarium, but also for educational shows, but uh, this guy is absolutely cool. He does need a name, by the way, so write down in the comments, let me know what you think this guy should be named because hopefully he's going to be a really cool animal ambassador for a long time to come. Remember the other day when I found this in RJ's pond? I'm going to go show Jay because he's always excited about this stuff. Jay, guess what? What? Look what I found. That's good, right? That's, that's an RJ tooth? That's an RJ tooth. Oh my God. Isn't that cool? No, that's actually scary. That's scary. Oh my god. That's a good one though, right? That's crazy. I know. We got reptileteeth.com coming your way. I gotta keep this one though. It won't be on the website, sorry. Oh god, I thought that was <laughs> gonna be the first one. Uh, let me know in the comments if you should get that one or Jay should keep it. <laughs> it's been about a week since we put the Bolin's python in this new enclosure and I could not be happier with it. You know, I was really worried about it stressing out because the first time we had it over at the Reptarium, it did not like it, but you can see, look at how alert it is right now. It's looking good. It's hanging out over here up in the trees. Looks absolutely gorgeous up here. I tell you what, I cannot wait to see how this thing comes when we can start taking it out for people. Gonna still give it another couple weeks. You know, we actually feed it probably tomorrow for the first time. So if it takes food in here, then I know it really settled in, but look at how gorgeous that snake is right there. And it definitely looks really happy. I'm just so excited to get it out of a rack system and to get it into where I think it really belongs. So this has absolutely worked out perfect. So don't tell me that you don't want to get a monitor Lisa shirt, right? I mean, come on now. You can get shirts, you can get hoodies. We've got hats, we got backpacks, we've got socks, we've got runners, we got joggers, we got all kinds of stuff. ReptileArmy.com. Join the army, but don't just buy the merch. When you get that merch, go ahead and talk to people about this because listen, a monitor Lisa shirt is definitely going to get people asking 
asking you questions, and then we need you, the reptile army, to go out there and convert them into reptile lovers. So go ahead, join the movement, and go to reptilearmy.com. This ain't nothing, it's like Okay, get, get it out. I think we gotta call the big guns. An actual close relative to that Bolin's python happens to be this guy here, which of course is a jungle carpet python. And they're both kind of like a black and yellow snake. Now this animal definitely has more contrast than a Bolin's python with that dark black and that bright, bright yellow. The only difference is the Bolin's python, the black is that iridescent where this is just a little bit more of a flat black. But wow, I tell you what, this snake, is absolutely gorgeous. Guys, I know this is silly, but I had to share it with you because I was pretty excited. I bought a van for the zoo to use. That's right, so that way we actually, we go to birthday parties, eventually schools, outdoor events, stuff like that. We can actually bring a van. And this is the very first vehicle I've ever bought for one of my companies. I've been in business since 1989 and have never had a vehicle for one of my companies. So we bought this van. We're gonna get it wrapped with Reptarium stuff here in the next week, week and a half. It's gonna look absolutely dope. So I just had to share it. Ken, it's cool. But the first ever vehicle I've ever bought for a company, Jay the Edutainer is super excited because now he doesn't have to take Lori's car to the zoo to use. And it'll look just so much more professional. And then once this is wrapped, it'll be like a, a, a driving advertisement for the Reptarium. So I am just absolutely stoked. It is absolutely crazy how big Chopsticks, the two-headed turtle is doing. Of course, they're red-eared sliders, and they are amazing. Again, I got them, they were actually pretty well started, but holy cow, every time I look at them, it looks like they get bigger and bigger. That's the thing about the two-headed animals like Ben and Jerry, of course, Chopsticks, is that once they get started and get going, they do just as good as a normal animal. I mean, these guys are absolutely incredible. How cool is that? I definitely would like to get some more two-headed turtles, but I love Chopsticks. Lori, you know how I'm excited about getting the van wrapped? I've got an idea. Okay. So what if both of the sides just have like me, a picture of me with a smile on my face, and then Reptarium underneath it? Sounds about right. <laughs> You're good? We're good with that? Oh yeah, I will be driving it, but yeah, I think that's perfect. Really? Yeah. Okay, well I got to go ahead, so there you go. I'm gonna get, get a picture, I'll have you Jay know, take a picture. You know what else we have? That we kept just for this too. Oh, we got the sloth? Yes, yeah, the sloth. Oh my window. gosh. <laughs> that is awesome. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to have my face on it. I you promise you that. But yeah, me and Drogo. Yeah, <laughs> not a bad idea though. Good job. Thanks, Lark. <laughs> Hi. No. Are you open? Oh my God. Yeah. Did you flapjack? The black throat monitor. <laughs> Typically, he tries to eat the black, <laughs> which is good. Hi. Until he gets older and he actually like eats it. Maybe he's just being camera shy today. But he is shedding too, so I know that takes a lot. But yeah, typically does this. Ow. And then he gets to me. Ball training 101. Come on. You know what it is. Ow. This is a pretty interesting snake. They actually call this a super reverse Okatee corn snake. And it's basically a recessive mutation. It's a locality and it's a polygenic. So there's a lot of genetics going on. So basically what it is, it's an Okatee location. It's an albino reverse Okatee, which basically just means it's an albino Okatee. And then it's polygenically bred to have just really cool contrast over several generations. So it's pretty cool how you can work with multiple things like location, recessive mutations, and polygenics all in the same, just to come together for a absolutely stunning snake. Every now and then I just have to show off this beautiful snake right here. Of course we have a handful of different true red tail boas. This is the Surinam red tail boas and oh my goodness. I thought as they get bigger that tail just gets darker and darker and more rich. I mean that color is ridiculous. I absolutely love true red tail boas. Again there's the common boas which are the ones that a lot of people have. Of course those are from Colombia and then there's the true red tail boas like these guys and they are absolutely stunning. It's been a couple of weeks, right? Uh -huh. And we're back to guess this shed. Oh gosh, here we go. Guess this shed. It's been a minute, man. It's been a minute. Is this a reptarium? Yes. It's a reptarium. Oh my goodness. Okay, very small scales. No, stop trying to look at the other stuff. I'm going to say green tree python. Gosh darn it. Was that right? Yeah. Okay, it's not all right, funny, keep man. winning. <laughs> Just a little update on Penelope, the hypo Burmese python. She is doing so good, I mean, it's amazing. You guys know we have Jeffrey, which is the hypo granite Burmese python, but this is just a hypo 
Burmese. Just one mutation. It's an incomplete dominant. If you breed two of these together, you get a white snake like Marshmallow, the solid white Burmese python. But I tell you what, I love this mutation. And as it gets bigger, it gets like kind of more blown out and kind of more yellowy looking. It's absolutely stunning. I think this one's going to go right along Sunrise, being one of our favorite snakes in the Reptarium in the next year or so. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I really appreciate you watching. If you do enjoy it, here is a playlist of a bunch of baby snakes because you know baby snakes are on their way. Over here, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.